This is the NVIDIA RTX A4000. And that's right, it currently retails at around a thousand pound mark, or just over one thousand dollars in the US. And for that price, you could have a brand new NVIDIA RTX 4080 Super with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, or the top of the range Radeon RX 3900 XTX with a massive 24 gigabytes of GDDR6. And those GPUs will allow you to game comfortably at 4K with great FPS. However, this RTX A4000 is not designed for gaming but it can still give you some great gaming performance on some of the latest AAA titles which I will demonstrate a little later. So why is it so expensive? Well I'll get to that shortly but first let's take a closer look at it. It's got a sleek professional look to it. You have this goldish band on both sides and both the Nvidia logo and the model of the GPU is finished in the same colour. There is no fancy RGB or triple fans. This just has a single fan. It is a single slot GPU too and it has four display port 1.4a ports supporting up to four monitors it has one six pin power connector only drawing a maximum of 140 watts it connected to your motherboard using a pci express 4.0 times 16 interface it uses a ga104 graphics processor which a variant is used in the 3060 series over on tech power up its performance is close to the RX 6750 XT and the RTX 4060 Ti, but the price point is much more closer to GPUs which perform 100% more better. I'll explain why it costs so much right after we see how it performs on some of the current AAA titles. First off, I will be testing this GPU on my current setup, which the specifications are on screen now. It is an old system, but hopefully it should not bottleneck on the CPU or the system memory. I normally run this old MSI Radeon RX 580 with 8 gigabytes of GDDR5 and this A4000 is just being borrowed for the purpose of this video. However, I'm hoping to upgrade within the next few months. My aim with this A4000 is to get at least 60 frames per second at the highest possible setting at 1440p and at 1080p. I'll be using my 27 inch 1440p gaming monitor which is capable of 165Hz. I have reviewed this monitor so please click on the link above if you want to check that out. First off let's look at Cyberpunk at 1440p. We have the DLSS on and set to balance and the texture quality is on high. This GPU does have ray tracing but believe me when I say it the FPS takes a big blow when it's on. On this scene we are getting over 80 frames per second and it's hitting 110 FPS in some areas. GPU utilization is over 90%. GPU temp is sat around 80 degrees and we are only using 5.7 gigabytes of VRAM. My 6th gen i7 is doing fairly well here reaching up to 80% usage. System memory is almost at 14 gigabytes. Graphics and detail look great. At 1080p with DLSS on quality and the texture set to high, this scene we are getting over 80 FPS. The GPU usage is between 60 and 80%, so it's not being thrashed. Temperatures are at 81 degrees. VRAM is at only 5.5 gigabytes of usage. The CPU is working much harder and it's sitting around 80%. System memory is only 13.5 gigabyte usage. The game looks great. If you set the DLSS to balance, you get higher FPS from this game easily. On Call of Duty, we have the resolution at 1440p. DLSS is set to quality and the game preset is set to ultra. Off the bat, we're hitting over 75 FPS and reaching over 100 FPS in areas. The game looks great and it is smooth. GPU utilization is at 99%, with temperatures holding at 82. VRAM is 11 gigabyte, so this game is using a lot more VRAM than Cyberpunk. My CPU is holding up well between 60 and 80% utilization, and the temps are under 40 degrees. We are using only 15 gigabytes of system memory. The average FPS is 87, which is great for these settings at this resolution. 1080p, we have the DLSS still set to quality, but the graphics preset is on extreme, which is the highest. We are hitting well over 90 FPS. GPU utilization is hitting 98% and the temperature still remains at 82 degrees. VRAM usage is 11 gigabyte utilization, with it hitting almost 12 gigabytes. CPU utilization is between 60 and 80% usage, with the temps around 40 degrees. The game graphics look great, and it's playing smoothly. You could get much better FPS by lowering the graphics preset, but honestly, at this current setting, it's playing great. On Red Dead Redemption 2 at 1440p, we have the settings set to high, the LSS is on, and is set to balance. Right off the bat, we're hitting over 80 FPS. GPU utilization is hitting over 95%. Temps are around 82 degrees, which is on the hot side. As long as it's not exceeding that, which it appears not to, then we should be okay. VRAM usage is at 4.8 gigabytes, so nowhere near that 16 gigabyte total. It's utilizing the full 140 watt draw. My old i7 CPU is doing well, hitting around 60% usage, 
and the temperature is only around 36 to 38 degrees max. System memory usage is almost at 16 gigabytes. I currently have 32 gigabytes in this system. In the daylight, the FPS has gone into the low 90s and it's hitting over 100 FPS. The graphics look great, although I just can't get over the details in the hair. I got the same effect when demonstrating Precision Laptop. Are you guys also getting this in your game? It is a bit of a spoiler. At 1080p, DLSS is set to quality and the texture is ultra. Hair quality is still looking terrible. We were getting 70 to 100 FPS. GPU utilization is at 97% with temperatures of 82 degrees and it's using almost 5 gigabytes of VRAM. GPU usage is set around 60% with almost 15 gigabyte of system RAM being used. And again, the game looks great but the hair is really bothering me. It just spoils it for me. I don't often play this game and I can't even tame a horse. Let me know in the comments how to fix that hair though. Now that we've seen that it can game but it's nowhere as near as its price range counterpart. Why is it so expensive? These professional GPUs are aimed at businesses and demand a higher premium because it's most likely that the GPU is used to make the business or the person using it money. For example, 3D artists, architects and product designers and so on all are producing something that is sellable. And the high premiums are not questioned because within days or weeks their work will pay for the GPU. Software applications that are used by these professionals are specifically designed and tuned to work flawlessly with these graphics cards. Hence why you won't often see a gaming GPU used in a professional business environment. However, it's great to know that if your system admin allows it, you're able to game at 1440p or 1080p at high settings. Those of you who are interested in seeing how a £2,500 GPU laptop option performs, you may want to click on the next recommended video. I would have run some benchmarks, but I've only had the GPU for a limited amount of time. However, if you're interested in seeing benchmarks, then let me know in the comments below and I'll try getting the GPU once again. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate a like. And for more tech reviews, tech tips, PC builds and much more, then please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching.